We're heading south. We're gonna go find some fish. We're gonna go find some water. Yeah. Oh yeah. The striper's clearly the uh, target species for this whole trip, I think now. Oh yeah. What? Yeah, dude. What do you think? Gotta be happy with that. that beautiful little striped bass. Look at this fish stage it just got. Look at this chrome beauty. This one's going home with us too. That's a good, that's a good dude. Track. That's gonna go great with our super thick New York steak. I'm Chris Blanchard. I'm Asher Wren. And you're watching the bike. So we just had a really bad catastrophe happen. One of our uh this is this is okay, so it's one of our bait bins, but it's it's a particular bait bin. It was for catfish that's basically just a bunch of uh, fish guts and it spilled in the truck or in the van. It's, it's spilled in the van. It spilled in the van all over when, my when sandals. When we were driving, I, the, when we went over that little that little uh, bump, I was like, God, that window crack and bump it made the whole van smell like fish. And that's why. some research on some fishing areas around here and found a spot that potentially could be leopard shark there could be some other rockfish other uh, saltwater species so we're gonna go check it out and we'll get back to you guys in 600 feet your destination will be on the right sweet all right we made it what are you wearing dude well <laughs> all, my, all my i didn't even shoes. notice when you got out of the car all of my shoes and my other pants are soaking wet. I didn't expect to fall in the water every day on the trip. <laughs> hey guys. So we're rocking uh, sardines and there's a big real school, real sardines. Oh, that's, and then that's a little uh, minnow. And uh, anchovies. He's gonna throw in a big chunk of sardine. I'm gonna put out a whole anchovy. I'm gonna cut its head off though. And I'm gonna put out this. And the way I'm gonna lay this is I'm gonna actually sew my line through this thing like that once through the tailpiece there and then again through here and i'm gonna stick that back up like that just so my hook tip is a little bit exposed pull that line tight and now i have magic thread and i'm going to use the magic thread but if you don't have it you can do this little loop trick where you take the line you can see right here and you bring the line down and you touch it to where the line's coming out of the fish and bring it over the tail and pull that back tight like that and that'll hold that now what this does is and wrap it around the bottom of it. It's going to take that line and it's going to keep it nice and tight to this. And wrap it around this. Go right. I'm going to go right underneath the hook there, and I'm going to bring it down real tight. I'm going to keep that hook tip just a little bit exposed, and that's going to keep my fish sitting on there, nice and uh, nice and rigged up. All right. I'm just going to give you guys a little yeah, right. scan. Give you a scan of the uh, bay front here. It's pretty sweet. had a good take on this rod right here Asher's got in his hand a couple of good bumps Let's see if it comes back all right guys so that was uh, pretty unproductive Asher got a takedown but it just kind of bang bang and then left um, so we're gonna go look for more so cleaning a striped bass is very similar to cleaning another fish even though I haven't actually caught a ton of keeper striped bass in my life i have cleaned a commercial the, boat's worth of fish yeah commercial boat's <laughs> worth of fish working in the kitchen industry they've they're always like asher you can you fuck with fish go get the fish so just run it from the uh, uh little anus hole all the way up either through the middle of these fins or to the side of it i usually go through the middle of them because then it just kind of parts it um symmetrical and i'm that kind of guy but a lot of people like to go on the outside because then you have all your fins in one pocket and if you're going to get rid of them it's easy to do so and then right in here behind the gills there's these collar plates and if you go just under the collar plate behind the gill line and just cut up to kind of sever that line down like right in here like that and right in here like that 
and get these collars just free from the rest of the, the gut line and the gills. See, there's like a, a gut line and gills. And once the collars come free, you come up here to the lip. And if you pull the lip down, see how it creates this little gullet, the waddle or whatever. So if you pop that out and you can see it's really thin, you can see my finger through there. So you come in this side, it just pokes through real nice. See the knife at the end of that? Just take that right off. And then you can keep the head on your fish, but you can remove these, this extra um, watch, watch this. Watch kind of piece ball. right here that you don't need. And, and it should, these guys have kind of tough little gill plates. So I'm gonna just give it a little bit cut, but it should have let you just pull out the gills and all of the guts and one clean line like that. So you've got all your gills in your gut pile. And then look, all that's left inside the fish is this swim bladder. This is its air bladder, which, which is blown up because the, you know, the fish has been dead for a little while. So it's gotten a little bit bloated. And once you puncture that, it just deflates. And we're gonna cut that out. And then right here underneath the, uh, the bottom of it, running down the top of the fish, there's this thing that kind of looks like a bloodline. It's real pronounced in salmon and steelhead and stuff like that, this bottom line. Um, it's actually the kidney of the fish, the kidney or the liver or something like that. But um, it runs down the back and we're just gonna kind of puncture that a little bit so that water will flow through it and come out. You can run your thumb down the back and like salmon and stuff, but this has a really serious backbone in here. So, you know, I would just get jammed up. All the guts are removed. It's mostly just a little bit of extra kind of hang-ons. We're gonna pull those off and uh, wash all this blood out of it. And then that fish is good to be stored or filleted the rest of the way. Once it's washed out, you know, you can see there's still some little um, bloodline stuff and like a little bit of uh, gut hanging around, but none of that's really actually guts. This is all just kind of membrane and stuff like that. And that's all gonna be fine once we pack this fish in ice. And we're probably gonna pack it in ice and then fillet it later so we can uh, turn it into some tacos. 18 inches on the dot, keeper. Uh, taco maker. Taco maker striped bass. All right, you guys have to see this. It's rolling up here in a minute. You guys are gonna enjoy this thoroughly. We got, it looked like a Nissan Sentra. But hold the phone. Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. Oh, oh, it's gonna. Oh. Yeah! The bigger than the car. That boat is bigger than that car. Whatever it takes to fish, right? Hey guys, we're in. What town are we in? Susan. We're in Susan, California. Susan. Susan. You know if there's anywhere around here to go fishing? Fishing, nigga. Who wanna go fishing? I'm gonna smoke some Oh man, I just wanted to do a little bit of fishing, but fishing where? In this cold egg? Fish, this nigga say fish. What you wanna fish? Well, I just want any kind of fish I can catch. Big or small, different types of species and new kinds of cool waters. Uh, you know what? Wait. What I about in there isn't there, is there a... say, No, I rode through a place this morning. See how God work? It says Stort. I see a lot of water over there and a lot of boats. Okay. Is there fish, you think? I don't know. Come on. I didn't <laughs> see nobody out there with a reel. <laughs> I was just driving through. What about Lake Berryessa? Lake Berryessa? Yep. What the hell? <laughs> I gotta look that one up. What was, your, what was your name? Auntie Queen. Auntie Queen, thank you very much, Auntie Queen. So we, that's Auntie Queen that we just met here and uh, Susan. Swiss in, and there's a little shop right here called Virgil's Bait and Ice. And we're gonna check out Virgil's Bait and Ice and see uh, what uh, Virgil's got to offer for us. <laughs> oh, there's a bar, dude. It's a, oh my. <laughs> is it really a tackle shop? Oh my God, it's a tackle shop and bar, bro. It's the coolest place I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> This place, this place is is a is amazing. Look at this place. Fishing, fishing tackle shop, and good old boy bar. This is this is the coolest place I've ever been in my life. I hope that when I die, I end up here. Uh, worms, anchovies, sardines, some uh, dough balls I made, some. Um, some blood worm things. We got piling worms you just gave us also. I don't think there's anything we don't have, really. Um, yeah, some old trout that I got that we're gonna cut into some little chunks. And everything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> All right. Well, 
we probably need to get out of this place or we'll never ever going to leave it's just so warm and homey everybody's having a good time it's fairly it's fairly heaven ass but they got their dog and their kids just hanging this out this place is insane shell i tried so hard to bring him home and i lost him i'm getting a job he's, i'm yeah, getting a job he's getting a here job and, and he's home. never coming home i'm sorry <laughs> i tried so hard to bring him home for you anything? like i'm on it but this place is amazing uh one of my favorite stops on the trip you know just uh thank you so you know this is uh Virgil's Bait and Tackle. It's at 201 Dude, literally, uh, Main Street. This is Street. the coolest place I've ever been to. <laughs> super, super cool. I'm pretty sure that this is, is Main Street right here. And that this is at 201 Main Street in, um, in, in Su Suisun City. Susan, Susan City. So we're on our way up to the uh, lake right now, Lake Berryessa. And I uh, had a couple dollars in my pocket, wanted some snacks. And decided to stop at this little bar, bar and a uh, liquor store, just to grab some chips and something like that. And the place is super, super cool. Look at the roof of this place. The whole, the whole place is covered in dollar bills with people's names on them, all over the ceiling. Look, there's, there's tens, fives. That's got to be a couple of grand. If I can guess exactly how many dollars there are up there, do I get to keep them? Sure. <laughs> You Looks like they're having poker night in here too. I wish I could stay and play, but we're gonna go fishing. So after seeing all these bills everywhere, I'm feeling like maybe I need to do one of my own. So let's take this dollar. Yeah, the bite, I-5 Tour 2020. So now we're gonna find a tack somewhere, find somewhere good to put it that maybe it'll still be next year so when we come back we can be like there it is right there put it over the night crawlers there it is fun stuff all right guys as you have seen that we've made stops at tackle shops some crazy bar that we ended up getting some bomb ass french fries at asher's out checking out the zone right now he's about to jump back in right here and see what kind of feedback he's got but uh we got access to fish here and we are going to take full advantage of it. What do you see, bro? Well, over here is like a pretty decent cliff down to the beach. There's a little beach that runs all the way along the water line here. We're going to plan this out. We're going to get some rods in. We got all of, we got so much bait. We got to use this bait before it goes bad. Yep. So yep. We're going to do it. We'll we're see you in a second. So um, we came up here to the lake. We got a bunch of catfish baits. We've got some other universal baits. Found a nice little campground posting up by the boat ramp. Um, there's lots and lots of day use sites here, so I imagine that this area has been fished really heavily. But we're going to fish it anyways because it's the easiest place that we could fish pretty close to the van, hang out in the van a little bit, do a little cleaning, make a little food, all that. If we really don't get any um, bites here, we don't feel anything for a little bit, we'll probably head back down to this bridge that we drove past. We saw some guys fishing down there. It looked real dark and deep and fishy. Oh, that time. Yeah, spotlight's kind of working. Where the spotlight is, there's two rod holders. You might be able to see on the big screen, but yeah, on this little screen, I can't see. And then over there, there's another little thing. Yeah, you probably can't really see them, but they're out there. We'll have to take this spotlight down there and kind of look at the bottom of the lake there. Looks like there's like a, what the hell is that? Shopping cart? No, no. All right, let's get some bait in the water. Well, we just had a bell ringer, but there's two rods on this one, one bell, but it could have been the wind. And so I was like this. Nothing yet. It's kind of chilly out here though. It's, yeah, I mean, 20 pound channels though. We had to come try no matter what. So we're going to give it another probably hour or so here, half hour, 45 minutes. And then uh, we're going to head back to this other spot we spotted, the other spot we spotted. The other um, place down the road that had a bridge crossing and there was a couple of people fishing um, and give it a shot there for a little while and then uh, yeah we are forced to head north after that so we'll see i just rigged up a little a little uh corky with some glow lights on it i took a little clip of a blood worm a berkeley gold blood worm and stuck it onto my hook there as a little bumper so it's going to keep my worm kind of hanging straight it won't slide down the hook um, like that and then at that same little place whoop, they sold these little custom um, weight slides so i got the weight slide on there with the higher i think a fish 
it, she'll still find it. The channel cat will go up there. But. Busto, no catfish, no bites. Um, a boat just pulled in a minute ago and they looked like good old boys that knew what they were doing. It's a full moon. We didn't even think about that. It's a full moon tonight. And that the night fishing for catfish is not great on a full moon. So we'll hit the road and find somewhere to try to smash out a fish tomorrow or something like that. Or even just drive home and call it a great adventure. You know, you don't end every day with a big fish, but you end as many of them as you can. And the last couple were good for us, so. Yeah, we're not, not gonna, gonna give up it. yet, so we're gonna go check it out. Yep, yep. Good morning, guys. So, last night we fished till about midnight and uh, we didn't get anything. We didn't get a bite or anything up there at the lake. We uh, drove up north and we crashed in a uh, rest area somewhere. I'm not too, we're like 50 miles from, uh, from, uh, sorry, I just woke up as you can probably tell. We're probably 50 miles from Redding, California. And uh, it's kind of rainy today, actually. I mean, we're Oregonian, so we don't give a really. We, uh, we got all our rain gear and stuff anyway, so we'll probably make another stop somewhere. See you soon. Another little uh, Umpqua watershed resource. Right here, you'll see fish trying to jump up these falls and they won't really make it up that. It's just too much for a salmon to get all the way up that. But right here, there's a little chute. And the fish can come in this, this way. This is a, a, a milling pool. So they'll come in here and they'll kind of swim around a little bit and then they'll jump up this little chute into the first of a box and then they can go up into this little, up into this little. And it's a little ladder that kind of zigzags all the way up the dam so that the fish can, you know, make it all the way up this thing and get up to their spawning grounds. So let's go down inside there and take a look. Super fun place to take the family. This ladder's a little sketchy. But the whole thing's kind of cool. It's built out to look all all kind of rocky and cave-like. You know, these are artificial artificial rocks or whatever, but they still look they still look real cool. Looks like we're there's a big tree right there, even though that's an artificial tree right there. Here we are inside of the fish ladder cave. First, we'll go over and we'll show you guys this box we were talking about earlier. So you can see right over here is where they come in. They come in, they zigzag this way, up that way, and then up that way, and then through there. And so it's like a, it's a ladder. Here's one of the first, first viewing holes of the ladder. And this one's a little bit harder to ever spot a fish in because of how churning and bubbly it is. But you will, officials sometimes just come right up against the glass and you'll see them in there. We're gonna go over to the next pool. Here's some information, but we'll go over to this next pool. In the same way, it's so white in here, it's a little bit hard. But you can hear them. She got away. She got away. She got away. talking right over here. We got, we got a YouTube fishing show we shoot. Yeah, that was the viewing area. We just collected some really cool footage that you'll see right now. get back on the road but man there is so many fish in there so if you are near the umqua right now what's the date today the sixth or the fifth today's the seventh bro okay i don't know what day it is apparently if you are near the umqua river you should probably hit it that was really fun totally worth it completely free so if you're looking for a little entertaining Ooh, it's just a good lake quick stretch. little date spot if you got a cool girl or place to take right. your kids if 
your kids are into this kind of thing. Or maybe your kids it's, are being a pain in the ass in the car while you're driving yeah, along. Yeah, yeah, you want to just, yeah. just lock them in the car and go down there and hang out with the fish. <laughs> you know, we might show you guys some of the mess that it is of, you know, unloading and getting home and all that, but this is pretty much the end of our trip, I think. You don't want to see that. You, you don't want to see that. any of that. I think we're out of here. So we'll, uh, we'll catch you guys on the next time that we decide to do some crazy weird adventure. I'm Chris Blanchard. I'm Asher Wren. And you're watching The Bite. Stay up. Slippery.